And basically, Gudeman lost it. He lost it on the outside, hit the tyre barrier. This tyre barrier is interesting, Robin, isn't it? Because instead of just having concrete walls, as we normally have around sure. the outside of an oval, this weekend they're, they're trying a new system. Of course, last year, Mark Lundell had his terrible accident when the, uh, the disc bell failed and the braking. I have to say it wasn't a standard Reynard piece with an airfoil and uh, turfed it into the wall and that was, must have been a heck of a shock and I'm sure it's created a lot of difficulties for him in his career in car. Maybe it's uh, slowed him down in uh, getting up to the front. This, uh, this tyre barrier, just uh, talking about it, they're actually, the tyres are all bolted together but there's the there's steel wires holding them in place as well to, to give it more rigidity but also it gives the uh, it gives that give. It obviously is very difficult to hitting a concrete wall, but it's been carefully designed so it doesn't just destroy. Because that's the problem with some tyre walls. You hit the tyre wall, the tyres go all over the place. But there's also across the face of the tyres is a sort of conveyor belt material, which yeah. actually binds it all together, and as well as absorbing the energy, hopefully it all stays intact as well. Yes, uh, you know it obviously worked very well because say Maurizio got out of the car fairly well as calm as I think he would be. I think uh, Moreno put him in a position where the uh, situation was unavoidable, which is uh, a shame. And it's you know, unfortunately his teammate Blundell going out with a, in effect with a spin as well. It's been a difficult day for Pat Wells. Yes, it has. Well, he, although Mark's not actually out of it, he's still in 10th place, so uh, you never know yeah, if he can true. stay in there. There he is, just coming into picture at the back of that group. You can see him behind the two Jip Ganassi cars. Mark's got the uh, the red and blue car running in 10th place. Vassar 8th, Zanardi 9th, and Blundell in 10th place so far. So let's, uh, let's hope that it all holds together. Still a long way to go in this race, which has uh, seen a remarkable number of incidents so far, all sorts of ups and downs and problems. As Bobby Rahal leads. Let's look again. You can launch on the outside. Suddenly, Guzman car just spears into Moreno's car. And poor old Roberto was thinking, hey, what happened there? I was just going to turn into the corner and suddenly I get attacked by uh, my fellow Brazilian. Very odd situation, but... I think it probably was that, you know, he, he'd seen Moreno and therefore he'd had to go onto the boondocks, onto the, the rubble and tire debris and stuff like that and he just didn't have the grip and it uh, back in came out and that was it and again he was being very prudent a lot of other drivers just turned down on Moreno and left it to Moreno to get out of the way Moreno's back out again look they've made repairs and he's on circuit again as uh, we can see the positions Rahal leads from De Ferran and Tracy Herta in fourth Unser fifth Andretti in sixth place and let me tell you Greg Moore then in seventh Vassa in eighth Zanardi in ninth, there you see it. Blundell in 10th place, Scott Pruitt in 11th place, but uh, still in good shape, different pit stops. And Michel Jourdain in 12th position. Then Bazell 13th, Hearn, Salis, Fangio, Johnston, PJ Jones, Max Pappis in 19th, Moreno's dropped down to 20th, and Guterman is out with a very damaged car. There are the other cars that are out. Poor old Dario Franchitti didn't even have a chance at the start of the race, taken out by one or two other cars at the start coming out of turn at number four onto the start finish straight even before the race got underway he was heading into the pits with a very deranged looking front suspension so it looks as though we're getting ready towards restart time somebody coming into the background looked like parker johnston coming in to make a pit stop but it's not going to be long now until we get this race underway again as bobby rahal has spent most of his time this afternoon as has everybody else running at uh, quarter revs tooling round behind the pace car. If you look at the leaderboard, you see Ray Held, Deferrin, Tracy. Yeah, there it is again. Yeah, just again, again, he was just on the outside. Suddenly it swapped in, so... There's no grip there. No, had it. So Bobby Rahal leads them round on lap 62 from Deferrin and Tracy with the Brian Herter in fourth position. There is Roberto Moreno waving people past, and it may be that he's been told to get to the back of the line, I would think. Yeah. But if you look, Ray Helder, Ferrer, and Tracy Herter, nicest possible way you'd say, well, they do tend to have incidents. And Unza Jr. is a strong driver. And, of course, we've got Pruitt, maybe with tactical advantage. OK, so it looks as though we're going racing again. Ray Hal has uh, stolen the advantage here. There's a canny driver for you. He's left you the front, absolutely sitting on the back straight. 
and Gilles now finds himself a good chunk of time away from Bobby Rahal at the restart. Third place for Tracy, fourth place for Brian Herter. As you say, oh, look at that, Andretti was a bit slow, and uh, the two Chip Ganassi cars were looking very good indeed coming down into turn one there. I don't know who made what ground. We'll have another look as they come round onto the back straight. But Rahal, it is, who got away very cleanly. Yeah, Michael was painfully slow on that straight. Now, whether he was just caught unawares or whether something wrong with his engine, whether he was slow out of the corner, I don't know. We'll see. Next time. You see, as they come over the line, Rahal, Ronda Ferran, Tracy, Herter, Hansa. And then the gap back to Greg Moore. And then it was behind Moore that we saw, well, yes, you see, both of the target cars have got past Michael Andretti now. So uh, that means that Moore is sixth, Vassa seventh, Zanardi eighth, and Andretti's dropped right back there, Robin. He's down to 11th position. He's got a problem. So <laughs> clearly, <laughs> problems for the championship leader. Don't forget, leading the series coming into this one, so it's uh, a fairly crucial moment as Andretti drops down the field. It uh, looks as though he's in trouble this afternoon. Mark Blundell's right behind him now. Blundell running in 12th place. As uh, the rest of them continue round, Ray Hal just opening up that advantage on the restart, now maintaining it, pretty much as it was when they yeah. took the green flag. Gilles de Ferran can maintain the pace, but he can't go any quicker as yet. And then Tracy sits there, trying to stay out of trouble for a while. Here is de Ferran. Let's just ride on board with him for a moment. Watch the car, watch the hands on the steering. Accelerating, fourth gear. Fifth gear, up through the kink, onto the back straight as Michael Andretti heads into the pit lane, as we thought, some sort of problem for Andretti. Now, let's see where they're going to work. Looks as though the engine cover is about to be taken off. And this looks fairly serious. Gilles de Ferran there in second place. Oh, Moore, very close to the wall. Greg Moore coming out of turn four, the blue and white car in the background, as close as anybody to that wall. Oh, he has got bravery. Bravery, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thought you were going to say something else yeah, there, Robin? I was. <laughs> Michael Andretti is in big trouble, though. Engine cover off the car, and that looks as though his race is run. Now, that is disappointing, isn't it? Because they've had such a good, reliable run of races up to this point in the championship, winning the opening race. He was third in the Surface Paradise, the second event, and uh, had a few problems in Long Beach with the tyre failures, which put him out of the race, but that was a bit of a one-off. This is really the first mechanical retirement that we've seen from the Swift chassis. Yes. We've got a good year procession. In fact, Moore is the first faster driving. But I, if, I were, if I were a betting man, which I'm not, I'd put my money on Little Hour or uh, Pruitt. This probably puts the car boss on those two. <laughs> well, as you say, the Goodyear tired cars are running well at the moment. With, uh, it's interesting to see that because the faster and tired cars, as you said earlier, have, have usually been competitive, at least in the early part of the stint, and then dropped away. But uh, right at the moment, the Goodyear seems to have the edge, and they really have responded magnificently to the challenge from Firestone. Last year was a bit of a Firestone benefit at the early part of the year. Having sure. said that, Goodyear did did come on strong towards the latter part of the year, and uh, yeah. and now it seems to be very, very even. Absolutely, it's a little bit. I mean, of course, we're seeing the same in Formula One with Bridgestone, who are the same company as Firestone, uh, taking on Goodyear in Formula One. I mean, Goodyear have got so much knowledge and so much experience, but you know they've had it their own way in both series for so long. It, but they were very much a sleeping giant and uh, had to respond. And they did. They have done. Good view of Gilles de Ferran on that back straight, up to 190 mile an hour, just over, building up, and then hard on the brakes into this one as they come around turn four to complete another lap. 68 laps completed as they cross the line this time, and Bobby Rahal still maintains the advantage. We're over half distance now as uh, de Ferran continues in second place. Tracy in third position. Herter is in fourth position. Then Alan Jr. in fifth. Greg Moore in sixth, Jimmy Vassar seventh, Alex Zanardi in eighth, Scott Pruitt in ninth place, Ralph Brazel tenth, Michel Jourdain eleventh, Mark Blundell is twelfth, then Walter Salis thirteenth, Richie Hearn fourteenth, Juan Fangio fifteenth, ahead of Parker Johnston, PJ Jones, and then Max Pappis, who's one lap down, and Roberto Moreno, who's shown as nineteenth, and he is in fact three laps down now. Michael Andretti has joined our list of retirements, however. As uh, you can see, 68 laps completed. And we go on to lap number 69. 
Ray Hal and De Ferran. The gap remains fairly constant at the moment between these two. And Gilles de Ferran, who had a good run here at uh, Rio race last year. In fact, he led it for a little while. Led it for around 20 laps at one stage last year, but he ran out of fuel, which seemed a bit careless. There's Michael Andretti just uh, still sitting in the pits. I don't quite know why. He, no, he is getting out. I wonder why he was still sitting in the car, because there didn't seem to be much prospect of him coming out and scoring any points. But he has retired, so Michael Andretti, the first of the real front runners, if you like, to go out of the race. And uh, that's a disappointment for the Swift team. They're having a tough day today with Roberto Moreno's troubles as well. We were talking about the Swift chassis a little bit earlier, Robin, and about the impressive debut that they made in Homestead. You've, uh, as I say, built Indy cars in the past. It's not easy, is it, for a company to come in fresh and actually come out and win the first race? No, it's funny. It almost seems a tradition that you do well in your first race. And our first race happened to be Indy. We were fastest qualifier. Reynards came out and they won their first race. Swift came out and they did uh, very well straight off. The Swift, I think, is it, we could see a sort of sea change here because uh, when we Michael came Andretti over. Makes his way over with oh, just hang on, let's hear from Michael for a moment, Robin. With the engine problem. Something internally in the engine, but it. Ah, well, we were hearing from Michael, and sadly, we're not hearing from Michael, so some sort of engine problem we gathered. But uh, that's a pity to lose him there and, uh, and lose him from the race. But yes, just coming back to what you were saying about the, the Swift chassis. Yeah, first it is a very big British influence. Uh, but secondly, they've got a lot of money behind them. They've got a very, very good wind tunnel. They've got a good designer. And clearly, the car's good. When we came over in the early days, you know, we were a sort of strange group of limeys coming over to take on American racing, race at Indy. And we were very affectionately received. They're great. Uh, I think people have got a little tired of this now. It's been going on for, what, 12, 13 years. And they'd love to see, they've been tired of seeing British car win year after year after year. Because the Penske's built down in Poland, Dorset, and has great operation down there. And uh, I think if uh, the Swift shows up well, I can see a lot of teams running Swifts, just for patriotic reasons. Um, and, of course, Swift do have for Carl Haas as a salesman who is second only to Rick Gore as the salesman of the year. It'd be very, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in a sales, uh, uh, sales discussion between uh, uh, Carla House and Rick Gore. <laughs> well, of course, it is a customer market, isn't it? I mean, you know, the manufacturers are there to build and sell cars. That's what you did with March. That's what Reynards do. That's what they've been so successful doing. And although there's only the two Swifts out there at the moment, as you say, with uh, the, the, the competitiveness of the car and that desire to, to race an American chassis. I, I just wonder how many, uh, many Swifts we will actually see on the grid next season. I, th I think it'll set back Swift on their performance. I mean, Reynards are doing a tremendous job uh, all the way. I mean, the car is the best, I'm sure, all, all the way around. Uh, their designer, Mark Muster, is a class designer. I mean, he should be designing a top, you know, not just a Formula One car, but for one of the top four teams. You know, why is, I don't know. I mean, Adrian obviously plays him very well. He's a class guy as well as a class engineer. But, uh, you know, they've got that covered. They've got not only a good car, they've got it with very good teams, and they've got a very good organisation backing it up. And Swift have got to do that, and that will take effort away from their, their what's put into their top two teams in the, in the Carl Haas, in the Newman Haas team. No suffer. Well, let's turn our attention back to what's actually happening on track for the moment because Bobby Rahal is continuing to lead very comfortably. Lap number 76 we're on now. Gilles de Ferran is uh, in second place. Paul Tracy third. We've been watching that battle as we've been talking, but it really hasn't changed much. De Ferran seems to be holding Tracy off reasonably comfortably at the moment. Herter then in fourth place. Unser in fifth. It's remarkably settled at the moment. I mean, seems to me a bit of a, a prelude perhaps to uh, all sorts of things going on later on. Yeah, it's the, you get these moments and you just wait for all hell to break loose. It's the sort of calm before the storm, whatever cliche you, you want to do. I mean, we, we'll start to see the, uh, the entertainment on the second bunch of pit stops, which are going to be probably 80 or slightly beyond 80. So we're only, what, five, six, seven, eight laps off that. So in about five minutes, we'll start to get active again. Yes. And a bit of chaos in the pits for a start. And the chaos in the pits could cause chaos out on the track as well. Yeah. Let's just ride with Jimmy Vassar, another great view of the...